Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to read more of our book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. And we are on Chapter 4 on page 113 on the last paragraph on page 113 of Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is called, Is Any Radiation Safe? The kind of serious poisoning introduced by radiation has already been described. I'll turn up the sound. We know that cancer and leukemia begin to occur five or more years after radiation has been received. Thus, if radiation were an environmental insult under study, one could examine a group of exposed persons one, two, three, or four years and reach the massively erroneous conclusion that the radiation has done no harm. That is what happens if scientists look for an immediate effect when radiation, when the real hazard is delayed. A self-evident truth? We must remember that one of the greatest public health er errors of judgment was made in precisely this way in the field of radiation protection and made by highly competent scientists. I'm going to take my glasses off. Yeah. <laughs> Leukemia appears in radiation exposed persons approximately five years after exposure, whereas most other cancers take 10 or more years to occur. Therefore, a group of humans exposed to ionizing radiation would show only leukemia five years later, simply because all other cancers have not yet occurred. The expert bodies of scientists studying radiation hazard for humans fell into this specific trap, and as a result, they seriously underestimated the cancer hazard. What is even worse, the error has been further compounded, knowing that some forms of cancer may take even 15 to 20 years to appear after radiation, these expert bodies still were refusing to consider additional cancers even though they realized it might still be too early, 15 years after radiation, to perceive the full effect. For most of the serious environmental poisons, Cancer at 5 to 25 years after the poisoning is precisely the kind of effect we must worry about. Genetic effects occurring in subsequent generations can be many more times serious than cancer. The folly of looking for immediate effects and thereby exonerating a poison must be strongly condemned if disaster is to be prevented. Well, we're already fucking there, aren't we, you guys? New subtitle. The careful studies required to observe facts. We have pointed out that one person out of 600 dying annually from cancer present, represents a, quote, major killer, unquote, entity, equivalent to the entire cancer problem in the United States. Could officials miss such an effect for an environmental poison through inadequate studies? The answer is yes. In fact, one repeatedly encounters supposedly scientific studies that have led to erroneous results and enormous public health blunders simply because of inadequate numbers of exposed persons were studied. How many people exposed to an environmental poison, radioactive or other, would be required. At the outset we realize that whether the number, that whatever the number, the observations won't begin to be meaningful, of, meaningful for at least 10 years because that is when the cancers are beginning to occur in appreciable numbers. Wow, you know what that means? We haven't seen anything yet because we're only five years into Fukushima. Suppose we ask ourselves about a study involving 1,200 people exposed to an environmental poison, a poison that might kill, after a 10-year period latency, one out of 600 people per year. Obviously, the first requirement would be a, quote, control, unquote, population, not exposed to the same poison to compare with the expo exposed group of 1,200 persons. So we would now be studying 2,400 persons, 12 who had been exposed to the poison 
and tw I mean 1,200 who had been exposed to the poison and 1,200 who had not been exposed. Except that now everybody has been exposed to the poison. I don't know how people don't cuss. Honest to God, this, this stuff makes me want to cuss bad. Let us consider why the 15th year of study, let us consider, say, the 15th year of study. Would we easily observe the massive effect that could be occurring? If the spontaneous or natural cancer occurrence rate is 1 per 600 per year, we would expect two cases in one year of observation among the control group. We would expect four cases in one year of observation for the exposed group, two spontaneously plus two for the poison effect. But there is a random statistical fluctuation in such occurrence rates from year to year, such that the control group might in a particular year show zero, one, two, three, four, or even more cancers occurring. The exposed group with even four cancers expected may in a particular, in a particular year show anywhere from zero to ten cases with a reasonable likelihood. Thus, what appears to be a large study, 2,400 persons under careful observation, turns out to be inadequate even to discover an effect so large as to represent the entire size of the U.S. cancer plus leukemia problem. I think that's shocking that they think 2,400 people is enough. <clears throat> Even if we had 3,000 people in the poison exposed group and 3,000 in the control group, with the expectancy of, five, of 10 and 5 cancer cases in one year respectively, we would still be uncertain of the meaning of the results simply because of statistical fluctuations. At least 6,000 exposed persons and 6,000 controls would be necessary for a reliable reading of even a massive effect, 1 in 600 per year, which we've never gotten. We've never gotten a study of 6,000 people. Yet techno technology promoters seem oblivious to the requirements in terms of how many people must be observed for meaningful answers. They consider a totally inadequate number of cases and conclude no effect observed. While this may delude the public into accepting poisonous byproducts of the technology, it is not consistent with survival of humans on Earth. We have been discussing here a massive effect that can only be considered a bludgeoning of the human species. Thank you, John Goffman. And even so, it is apparent that an, that an inadequate study can lead easily to the ridiculous assertion, quote, no effect observed, unquote. Atomic energy development must, unfortunately, be regarded as one of the worst examples of irresponsibility of this sort. The important purpose of demonstrating the rash unsoundness of, quote, expert, unquote, pronouncements in the past is to alert the public to such errors so that they will insist on a vastly improved performance in public matters in the future for radioactivity and other serious pollutants. Well, John, sorry, you fucking failed on that one. Everybody's just fucking laying down and letting the truck keep running over them. Back to the book. In recent testimony before the Congress, the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy Hearings, Dr. Paul Tompkins, Executive Director for the Federal Radiation Council, described with apparent pride the history of the so-called radiation protection standards. Quote, a more apt description might be the history of radiation disaster standards. Unquote. Dr. Tompkins 
related that in 1954, the National Committee on Radiation Protection, a leading group of experts, has issued the following statement, quote, We have a lower limit of continuous exposure to radiation that is unavoidably tolerated by man. There is, on the other hand, a much higher level of exposure that is definitively known to be harmful. Between these two extremes, there is a, the, a level of exposure in the neighborhood of 0.1 ram per day that experience to date shows to be safe for the individual concerned." Unquote. The reference is Dr. Paul Tompkins quoting directly from the 1954 NCRP statement in the environmental effects of producing electric power. Hearings before the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy 91st Congress first section session October, November, 1969, Part 1. Not a shred of scientific evidence was produced to support this statement, an astounding statement of suppo supposed reassurance. Let me reread that sentence. Not a shred of scientific evidence was produced to support this statement, an astounding statement of supposed reassurance. Now let us consider, in the light of our medical knowledge of radiation injury, 16 short years later, what the cost would have been for public exposure to radiation at such supposedly safe levels. The NCRP was reassuring about 0.1 rad per day. For estimations of cancer risk, we customarily estimate the dose for persons of about 30 years of age. At 0.1 rad per day, a person would accumulate 1,095 rads by 30 years of age. Quote, since 36.5 rads would be, an, would be accumulated in one year at this rate, it would be 36.5 times 30, or 1,095 rads in 30 years." Unquote. Now from extensive studies concerning the cancer-producing and leukemia-producing abilities of ionizing radiation in humans, it appears that approximately 50 rads of accumulated exposure will add to many cancers plus leukemias as occur spontaneously due to natural or spontaneous causes. And such added cancers and leukemias will occur each year for many years once the latency period is over, which means it gets worse and worse. By simple arithmetic, 1,095 divided by 50 equals 21, so we can expect 21 times the natural incidence of cancer plus leukemia. 21 times the natural spontaneous fatality from cancer plus leukemia would have been the result of a dose pronounced by a body of experts as being without physical effects upon the person of exposed. So let's read that again. 21 times the natural spontaneous fatality rate from cancer plus leukemia would have been the result of a dose pronounced by a body of experts as being without physical effects upon the person exposed. You get that? So even though they know they're causing cancer, they're saying they will say there is no physical effects on the person exposed. I'm going to end here. We're on page 119. I see that we're at 15 minutes. I think that's... We have a few more pages to go, three more pages. I'll finish reading that up tomorrow night. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Thank you for listening to my video. Um, this information is super important, and we need to digest it and make it work for us. So I'll end here. Hopefully you guys will take some action. Not hopefully... I trust that you will take some action. So put your courage feet on you guys. Let's let's put an end to this insanity.
That's why I do these readings. That's why I'm on the radio show. That's why I do my YouTube channel. Excuse me. That's why I do the interviews. That's why I do the puppets, which I do need to do a puppet show soon. So I will. But um, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Appreciate everybody who loves our earth. Ciao.